Hey guys, this is Pesaka Mad here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make removable trench coats for your Lego minifigures. So, what you are going to need is one Lego minifigure, and it is best if you have arms that match the color of the trench coat that you want to make. You are also going to need a hole punch or tool for cutting armholes. A uh, pair of scissors, a uh, pen, a ruler, and this is just for making sure your measurements are right, and whatever material you're going to use. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this uh, cloth material here that's very strong and very thin, and that works well with your LEGO minifigures. But this design for a trench coat also works super well with most kinds of paper. Um, like this stuff right here. You can just uh, cut it and it's a little less durable than the cloth, but it works uh, quite well. Alright, let's get right into making the material. Okay, so if you've been following my channel for a while now, you will have probably seen me use some of this material in my previous videos because I do use it a lot. And this is simply just an old bed sheet that I've got here. I've got quite a bit of it too left over, so I, this will last me a really long time. And what I'll do is I'll just take a section of this, uh, cut a piece out, and then paint it to whatever color that I may want. And so far I've tried a number of different paints and they all seem to work really well. Uh, just depending on the thickness of the paint will give you a different texture of material afterwards. And why bedsheet? Because this material, or this particular bedsheet that I have, and I'm pretty sure most bedsheets will work, is super, super thin. Um, which is really great for customs and getting really tight little pieces that fit around your minifigures snugly. And once it's been painted, it cuts really easily as well. As you can see here, I'll just cut a piece off right here. It just cuts super nicely because the paint uh, makes it a bit more dense um, so I've never had trouble sometimes cutting the material before you're gonna paint it is a little difficult and you're gonna want some sharp scissors for that but once it's painted it is uh, some of the best material that I have to work with I really like using this stuff now this isn't my original idea I actually got this idea from Noble Artist, and I will leave a link to his video on how to make this stuff right up here. Uh, so you can go check that out and see what he does to uh, and where I got my inspiration for making this stuff. Okay, so now that you guys know how to make this awesome material, let's go ahead and measure out our trench coat so we can cut it out. Um, now once you have one trench coat, it's really easy to just make multiples by tracing it out. But since you guys probably don't, I'm going to tell you what size I like to make my standard trench coat. And why I say standard is because uh, the trench coat size can vary greatly depending on how tall you want the collar above the shoulder or how uh, far you want the sides to come over the front. And that will just take a bit of experimentation on your part to figure out what your preferred size of trench coat is. But for this standard one, which just gives you a nice even size collar and about halfway, or uh, I don't know, about half a centimeter uh, coming over the front, um, you're going to want to uh, measure out about three centimeters top from bottom or a little over an inch. Um, and then for your, you're going to want it tapering down the sides so it fits uh, with the angle of the torso. So you're going to want to measure out the top to be about four centimeters or a little less than one and a half inches. So I'll just quickly dot that down there. And then the bottom of the trench coat is going to be five centimeters. So I've already got it lined up with the side. Uh, like that or about two inches a little more than two inches so 
Now that you've got your dots lined down, you can just trace out the outline of your trench coat. And then on the bottom, I like to um, curve it just a bit, make a bit of a um, curve on the bottom so that it just fits around the figure a bit nicer. And now for the armholes. The armholes are pretty tricky, but I like to leave about one and a half centimeters in between them here or about uh, three quarters of an inch roughly in between and then I just use a hole punch like this to cut them out. Now if you have got an X-Acto knife or something you can just cut out squares and uh, the bigger you make that the more room you're gonna have to adjust them on your minifigure so that's why I like using a hole punch because it's a bit bigger than the size of the arm so you can move it around and adjust it to your height. Um, so let's just trace this out quickly here. Trace out the arm circles and then you can pull it off, do any mix work. So you can see, you get basically a rectangle just about like that. And then you can go ahead and cut that out. Just like that. All right. So I've gone ahead and completely cut this out already. And you can see I also added a little cut in the top here where the collar is going to be. Uh, so when we fold that over and put that on the minifigure, it doesn't uh, get stuck or rip up. So now what you're going to need to do to put it on a minifigure is take off its arms. Just like that. And then... Insert one arm through the hole and then pop it back on the minifigure like that. And this is where it's nice to have slightly bigger holes because you can kind of move it around or adjust it to the size of your minifigure. And then you're just going to do the same with the other arm. Like this. Oh, this arm's sticky. Uh, oh, I see what I'm doing wrong. See, that's what you want to be careful of. You can see I started to try to push the actual material through, so you want to make sure the hole is lined up nicely before you pop it on. Like that. And then, yeah, wiggle it around. It's going to take a little bit of work to get into the right position. But once you do, I think it looks quite nice. So now, if you're having a bit of trouble keeping it uh, in one place. Sometimes I like to use a little bit of clay or a uh, tack like this. Uh, so I'm just going to pop some under the collar here. Sometimes it takes a little bit of stick and then you can just roll that over on itself and it will stick much better and give you a bit more of a defined collar right there. And again, yeah, it's just going to take some work to make it look nice. But once you've finished that all up, uh, I think these look really great. And one pro to using paper over this cloth material is paper will crease a bit nicer. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so that's it for this video, guys. If you have any questions or requests, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video or got anything out of it, please leave a like. It really helps the channel out. And also, if you want to see more LEGO-related content like this, Smash that subscribe button, and hopefully I will be seeing you all soon. God bless, have a great day, and this is Bissakamad, signing off.